Are you stressed out by A-level results day? If so, you've come to the right place. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Yusuf and I'm an Oxford medical student. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about A-level results day, that dreaded day that everyone doesn't look forward to. We're going to be talking about what to do, how to prepare for it, what you can do to deal with rejection, whether that be not receiving an offer for medicine or also not quite meeting your grades required to meet your offer. This video took a lot of time, so we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and leave a like so you don't miss out on any new videos that we create. And let's get into it. With results day fast approaching, you might be experiencing a fair bit of anxiety. So first of all, try and be pragmatic and focus on doing things that you can control at this point. So of course it's too late to do anything about your exams, but that doesn't mean you can't focus on eating well, sleeping well, and doing things that distract you and make you happy. Secondly, and this is some pretty difficult advice to accept, you have to remember that these exam results are not the be all end all. There have been exam results in the past, and there will probably be exam results in the future. And developing a growth mindset where you realize that, even if you don't do as well as you had hoped, that there is potential for you to do better in the future, this sort of mindset will help you stay calm, and be more hopeful about the future. And finally, check out our exam anxiety video for some related tips which you might find useful. So, results day comes around and unfortunately you've missed your offer to study medicine. What can you do next? Well, there is the option of medicine clearing. Clearing is when universities put up their spare places on a course for you to apply to on results day with your results in hand. Now, with medicine, it's quite uncommon for students to get in through clearing but it is an option that's available. Some universities are more likely to put up places than others, and we strongly recommend that you look these up before results day. Hopefully, if you do miss your offer, this is something that you can make use of. It's always a good idea to be prepared for all types of possibilities, whether good or bad. And this is something that we talk about in the Aspiring Medics mindset as well, realizing that things may not always go your way, but still being prepared for that possibility. So my top tip is to make sure that you're prepared for the possibility of clearing. So first, create a fact file of all the important information you might need when you're phoning or emailing universities to get in through clearing. Some of the information that you might need includes your UCAS ID, your UCAS login details, and your GCSE results. Second, double check how you're going to get your results. Are you going to go in physically to your school and pick up a physical copy of paper with your results, or are you going to find this out online? Number three, make sure to do your research and find out which universities are actually going into clearing that year. Now, clearing through medicine is not very common at all, and occasionally you'll get a couple of places from some universities. So make sure to check the list of universities going into clearing for that year. However, historically, there are some universities which have had clearing places most years. These include the University of Buckingham, the University of Central Lancashire, St. George's, Hull York University, and the University of Leeds through their Gateway Year into Medicine program. So make sure to look at these universities first. Don't lose hope. Missing the grades on this occasion doesn't mean you will never be a doctor. It takes people sometimes years, decades to become a doctor, but they eventually succeed because it's their ambition, they're chasing their dream goals. So right now, what you're probably thinking is your life is over, but it's not. Trust me, it is not. So right now, take some time to figure out what your plan is and rebuild your vision of what your path to becoming a medic will look like. So this could be taking a gap year, researching your A-levels, doing a biomedical degree and going via transfer, or later on do, after doing a degree entering graduate entry medicine. And you know, it is very daunting right now, but by weighing the pros and cons of the information that you'll be looking at for your future career path right now, you can make a good and valid decision. You've also got to have a very good growth mindset too. You need to have a positive aspect. You need to be constantly developing yourself and improving on what you need to do. Good luck and I hope you smash it on Thursday. Okay, so if you do unfortunately miss your offer, the first thing you want to do is phone up that medical school where you received that offer from to see if they'll still take you. It might be that they still can, but you want to phone them up first to find out if that's a possibility. Now, another option that's available if you do miss your offer on results day is remarking. It's important that on the day you phone up your university as soon as possible to find out if they're happy to hold your place for medicine. If they are, look at your results, find out which papers need to be remarked and then what sort of remark they need. Do they need to be recounted or fully remarked? Hopefully, if you follow these steps, you can get them remarked swiftly 
and you can hold your place to study medicine. In the heat of results day, it can be very easy to get caught up in a scramble of going into clearing or looking into other options to get into medicine. However, there's a very important question that many people forget to ask themselves completely. And that is, do I still want to do medicine? Your journey into medicine probably began over a year ago when you did work experience or your UCAT or started writing a personal statement. But the reality is that a lot might have changed in that last year and this career might not be something that you truly want to do anymore. This is a fantastic chance to take a step back and reflect on whether this is still what you want to spend the rest of your life doing because medicine is a very long degree and ultimately a lifelong career. To help you with these sort of questions, feel free to check out our Why Medicine series where we answer questions such as why do medicine, why not do medicine and why doctors are leaving the NHS currently. As a result, this is your chance to once again reflect and make sure that this is the career path for you. If you haven't quite met your grades, one thing that you may want to consider is resetting your A-levels. This isn't seen as the greatest option by many because of the fact that it will mean an extra year that they're going to have to do. And also because not all medical schools will accept reset A-levels. You also want to have a look at their terms in a lot of detail because they may also want you to do all the A-levels in one sitting as opposed to doing two A-levels in one year and the next in the other. So that's something you really want to consider. So every year there are some students who opt to do a biomedical degree or a transition course. On these courses you can really learn the fundamentals and the basics of medicine before hopefully you go on to study medicine as your main degree. If you are thinking about doing this we strongly recommend you to do your research and look up the pros and the cons of doing such a thing. At the Aspiring Medics, it's not something that we strongly recommend for certain reasons. For instance, the competitiveness level at postgraduate application is actually higher than it is at undergraduate. And there's the increased cost of studying for anywhere from one to three years. So doing a transition course is something that can work for some people. However, the thing that we'd recommend the most is to actually take a gap year. One year may seem like a lot, especially in sick form, but trust me, a gap year is negligible compared to the whole medicine career. Medicine as a course is either going to be five or six years. And as a vocation, it's a lifetime vocation. You know, you're going to be working for the next 30 to 40 years anyways. So trust me when we say that one year makes no difference. I've got so many friends from Oxford Medical School that took a gap year or two gap years. And they were so grateful for that just as a chance to anchor themselves and also just as a chance to refocus and make their application even better. If you've decided to date a gap year, make sure you have a plan of what you're going to do in that gap year. I think it's a really good idea to make a list of all your goals that you want to achieve in this year at the beginning of your gap year. Now these don't just have to be goals relating to medicine, so for example making your application stronger and getting into med school. These goals can also just have to do with your life, maybe getting your driver's license, going to the gym more often, traveling around the world. There's so many things that you can achieve in this year and it will be really useful if you make a list of these goals that you want to achieve. At the end of the day, don't lose focus. This year is for you to boost your application so that in the next application cycle, you are successful with all of your medicine offers. So things that you can do in your gap year to boost your application are getting more work experience. And this doesn't just have to be by shadowing doctors. This can also be by working as a healthcare assistant, which is actually a paid role or pharmacy assistant. You can also volunteer in care homes. And if you're struggling to find in-person work experience, make sure to check out the Aspiring Medics online work experience course. We have over 50 anonymized case studies across multiple specialties including oncology, public health, GP, surgery and so on. If you want more tips on what to do in your gap year, make sure to check out Jess's video. Jess is a medical student at King's College London and she actually took a gap year and takes you through her top five tips on what to do during your gap year. If on results day you do determine that you need to reapply for medicine next year, as frustrating as it is, it can indeed be a little bit of a blessing. You have been through the application process once already, so this year out is not only a chance to get very valuable experience, it's also a chance to reflect on your application process and help refine it for the next application cycle. And this can be all the way from your personal statement to your UCAT slash BMAT scores and your medicine interview techniques. The sort of thing that can really help with this is some one-to-one -one tutoring, which is a service that we offer. Feel free to check out the link in the description below for a free consultation with our expert tutors. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and leave a like if you found it helpful. And we'll see you in the next one. Best of luck.